Hello YouTube, Salivate Metal here. I found this quite interesting um, infographic about gold price and how it talks about the seismograph of supply and demand for gold. It kind of shows the kind of what pulls it from demand drivers and supply factors through the last couple of years. And it's a little bit outdated, but I think it probably holds true today. And there's probably other factors as well that kind of affect demand and um, and maybe even some supply. That is <clears throat> some of the investments uh, aspect of it with the uh, cryptocurrencies and the like. Seems like, you know, I don't know if it can be quantitated or not or measured in some manner of form. But it does seem like, at least I've noticed in the community here, that there's been a push or some people have been uh, driven more towards the cryptocurrencies as of late, Bitcoin specifically. And uh, the price thereof has dropped some, but it's started to <clears throat> gain momentum again in the last few days. But looking at this infographic, it's quite interesting to see the demand drivers from 2008 to 2013 that we see here. From central banks, technology, investment, and jewelry. And uh, it's, a, it's quite fascinating to see the different levels where the, uh, the jewelry seems to be the, uh, the biggest driver for demand uh, through the years and uh, and it's increased here in 2013 and I'm wondering if that has to do with the um, demand in India and China and the in the east for the for 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 jewelry because it wasn't as much when the gold prices were higher people it was less it was wasn't it was harder to afford to, to grab gold because of, of the uh, the rising prices. But now that the prices have eased back a bit, you see the, the more demand for jewelry pop up. But look here, <clears throat> investment uh, has really come down a lot in 2013. And I would love to see what this chart, what this infographic would look like for, for 2016 and 2017 and where this level would be that's quite a drastic drop even from 2008 where uh investment is <clears throat> of course we know that when they say investment gold really isn't an investment it's a hedge because it doesn't pay dividends or any, or any of the like but uh, nonetheless uh we see technology um kind of holding its own but it's really decreased somewhat there um it's kind of at the levels of 2009 and it's kind of wavered back and forth. And then central banks, we see the central bank holdings and demand for them have really uh, come back off a little bit, at least since 2013. And so there we see the seismograph and you see the supply factors have increased um, comparatively, which is why some of the costs has come down in in two since 2013 so we see that the three different categories here are mining recycle gold and central banks and we can see that the supply of central banks was as such there are 236 tons and here by the way we see the numbers here on this side mining there's been a lot of supply um coming in but notice that the central central bank factors they all but disappeared here very interesting indeed to see that. So we will see how uh, the recycled gold has kind of kept pretty much on pace. 2010 had a pretty uh, high supply come in because of the higher prices and in 2011, so that's understandable. But as the price comes down, the supply of recycled gold uh, lessens as well. <clears throat> so that was quite an interesting infographic. I would love to see this played out for 2000 and. Uh, 13, 14, 15, and 16. I would love to see how how it's progressed since then. It seems like some of these infographics are uh, kind of outdated. We don't see very many, very many of the new ones. So here's another kind of chart that shows sort of the same type of different things, a distribution of supply and demand. Uh, another way of looking at it, and you can kind of see here how the, how the ratios between the two have really shifted over the years. But since 2008, 2013, they've pretty much evened out, except for uh, the central banks have uh, been demanding more. And that, I think, is coming from places such as China and India have been driving that market. <clears throat> so that's where they increase for demand for those. Whereas in supply, we've seen supply come off since 2008. 
And some of that very well may have been in places like Canada selling off all their gold reserves. This is an interesting little factoid. Gold as a security anchor. It says that 83% of German investors buy gold for value preservation and as a protection against inflation. So that is interesting that 83% of the German investors um, uh, do uh, do uh, hold gold for that reason. Very interesting indeed. So it seems like that there is still some people out there in the West that do see gold as a as a good hedge. And then this here, these uh, little factoids here at the bottom in the short and midterm, the normal, the nominal gold price can fluctuate significantly, but historically gold has been a good store of value <clears throat> in the long term. And really that's the truth. You hold it long term, you'll end up being ahead of the game or at least uh, right around the, uh, the, 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 value for what it is you know the, the the true value and that's just it value really is in gold and silver and it's just the dollar that fluctuates or the currencies that that change uh, gold really is stable now the short term and the midterm yes there's going to be fluctuations which means that you can either get gold on sale or you may overpay for an ounce of gold or or what have you that happens too, especially with premiums and premium increases and the like. So, uh, yeah. And this is obviously coming from a, a place that does uh, sell gold, trustablegold.com. Never heard of them before, but uh, that's okay. It's, you know, they're obviously getting some facts here and how it's shown here. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to y'all for watching. I encourage you to please rate, comment, and subscribe.